Okay, a little warning for this topic. It tends to be one of the more challenging topics that you're going to do in geometry. The reason being is because we're going to use a new function on our calculator. We're going to have a ton of new vocabulary, sine, cosine, and tangent, and it's going to be a lot of manipulation and algebra. So do not hesitate to ask for help. If you absolutely have no idea what's going on, you've got to raise your hand and ask for help. So before, when we did Pythagorean theorem, you had a right triangle and you were given two sides looking for the third side. So how do you know when to use trig or when to use Pythagorean theorem? With Pythagorean theorem you're going to be given two sides you're going to be asked for the third side. With trig, you're going to be given two sides and asked for an angle measure, or you're going to be given an angle and one side asked to find the second side. So you're going to be given one angle and one side asked to find the second side. Now, it is incredibly important that you remember that because a lot of you are going to try to use Pythagorean Theorem when you can't or you're going to try to use Trig when you can't. So you really have to pay attention to what it's asking for. So for the first example, if you can notice, you're given one side, one side, and one angle measure. That's not the 90 degree angle. These are all dealing with right triangles. So the, the right triangle is definitely, the right angle is definitely given. It's the acute angle it's given and you're asked to find a side, so this is the missing side. So I know that I'm not using Pythagorean Theorem because I don't have enough information. So the first step that we do, we look at the angle we're given, 25 degrees, the acute angle that we're given, 25 degrees, and we label each side according to what it is in relationship to that angle. So this side, x, is the opposite side. To 25. It's across from 25. And this side, 18, is touching the angle 25 degrees. It's called adjacent to. So right off the bat, I label opposite and adjacent. And then I write down my sayings. So, ka, toa. And I look to see which one of these does it match. Well, we have an O and an A. So it's O, A, it's tangent that we'll be using. Tangent stands for tangent of an angle equals opposite side over the adjacent side. So I write this down and then I fill in my missing pieces. The angle is 25 degrees. So tangent of 25 degrees equals my opposite side, which we said was x, over my adjacent side, which we said was 18, or it was shown as 18. Then I'm just solving for x, which eventually going to be cross multiplying, but we need to figure out the value of tangent of 25. Tangent of 25 is just a number, and we need to figure out what that number is. So first thing we do is we check to see if we are in degree mode. So this right here should be highlighted, mode, which is here, and then degree. And then you type in tan, which is this button right here, tan of 25, and see what it equals. Now, normally I've always told you nearest tenths, do nearest tenths place. Well, now with trigonometry, we do the nearest thousands. So that's four decimal places, or four places after the decimal. So the tangent of 25 equals 0.4663. And that equals x over 18. And now, I'm actually going to carry this up over here, 0.4663 equals x over 18. 
Now I'm going to put 0.4663 over 1 because it's going to help me to remember how to cross multiply. Because remember, every number in the world can be put over 1 and it'll hold the same value. So cross multiplying, we do x times 1, which is x, and then we do 0.4663 times 18. So I can just take this number right here and multiply it to 18. And that will give me 8 point, now we can round to the nearest tenths place, 8.4. So this side length is 8.4. And then I just write that down and I make sure that this is not the biggest side. The biggest side should be the hypotenuse. We don't know what that is yet, but we could find it using Pythagorean theorem. But this side is 8.4. All right, let's try another example. This time they gave us the angle up top, 70 degrees, and I'm going to label the sides as they relate to the 70. You'll see that 15 is adjacent, so I put a little a there. It's adjacent to the angle, and x is also adjacent to 70, meaning it's touching that angle, but because it's across from the 90 degree angle, it has a different name. It's called the hypotenuse. So yeah, it looks like it's adjacent, but technically adjacent's already used. This has another name. It's called the hypotenuse. So then I write down my sayings again. So, ka, toa, and I look for the one that has an A and an H in it. And that would be ka for cosine. So it stands for cosine of your angle equals adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So I fill in what I know. Cosine of your angle, your angle is 70, that's the reference angle you used. That equals adjacent, which is 15, over hypotenuse, which is what we're looking for, x. Okay, now I'm just solving for x, and I need to figure out what the cosine of 70 is equal to. So I press cosine and 70, and I see what value that holds. And that's going to equal 0 0.3420, which equals 15 over x. And again, I'm cross multiplying, so I'm going to put 0 0.3420 over 1, because every number can go over 1 and still hold the same value. And I cross multiply. 15 times 1 is 15 and that equals 0 0.3420 times x. And this is the one that confuses a lot of people just because it's two steps. You have to cross multiply and then you're going to have to divide to get x by itself. So the number is 0 0.3420x, we want to get x by itself, so we divide both sides by 0 0.3420. And that will isolate our x. So I do 15 divided by 0 0.3420. And that will give me x is 43.9 for this side right here. And it's the hypotenuse, and it's bigger than the 15, so at least we know we're on the right track. Okay, we're going to do one more example together and then I will release you to do the rest on your own. So the next example, again, we're given an angle measure, we're given a side, and we're asked to find the second side. So in relationship to 27, x is the adjacent side, and 19 is also adjacent to 27, but again, it has a special name, it's across from the right angle, it's called the hypotenuse. So I write down my saying, so, ka, toa, and I look to see which of the three trig ratios have an a and an h in it. And again, I'm using cosine. So cosine of your angle equals a over h, and now I fill in. Cosine of my angle, my angle is 27, equals a, which is x, over h, which is 19. I need to figure out what the cosine of 27 is, and that's 0 0.8910.
and that equals x over 19. And I'm going to put this over 1 and cross multiply. So I get x times 1, which is x, equals 0 0.8910 times 19. So I can just take this 0 0.8910 and multiply it by 19. So I get x is 16.93 or just 16.9. All right, the next example, we're going to do it a little bit slow. I'm going to have you pause the video, just label the sides as they relate to this angle, 52. Is 13 adjacent, opposite, or hypotenuse? Is x adjacent, opposite, or hypotenuse? Pause the video and see if you labeled it the same way that I do. Okay, if you did not label 13 as adjacent and you did not label x as O, opposite, then raise your hand so we can go over why 13 is the adjacent and x is opposite. Now pause the video and tell me which of your trig functions, here's your three trig functions, so katoa, which of your three trig functions you're going to use. Pause the video and just write down which one of these you'll be using. Okay, and you should have picked TOA, tangent, and that stands for tangent of your angle equals opposite side over the adjacent side. So now fill in what the angle is, what the opposite side is, and what the adjacent side is. And I want you to go ahead and set up your equation, solve for x, pause the video, and see if you get exactly the same thing I do for the value of x. So you're going all the way straight through until you get x equals. Okay, and you should have gotten that x is 16.6. If you did not get this, you need to raise your hand and ask and make sure that you truly understand it. Okay, and I'm going to leave you to do the last example completely on your own. So this is the process by which you solve for x in a trig ratio. First, I mean, I know all we've been doing is trigonometry, but first you have to identify, are you actually using trig? Well, you have one angle and one side, you're asked to find the second side. So that's one of the qualifications. One angle and one side asked to find the second side. So we know we're doing trig. Label your sides as they relate to angle 61 degrees, solve for x, and then pause the video, or unpause the video, so I guess play the video, and tell me what you get for x. All right, and we should have gotten that x is 27.4. If you did not get that, you need to raise your hand and let us know, or you need to ask someone that understands.